These little guys here are the Fio SP3 active loudspeakers. As you can see, they're really tiny. They're also really solid. And I was really curious to find out if there was any way that Fio had actually managed to get great sound out of such a small box. So come with me as we go to find out. As I said in the opening, these are an active loudspeaker. They're a two-way loudspeaker, as you can see. They've got a port on the back, and we'll talk about the back panel in a minute. But I want to start off by saying a huge thanks to Appos Audio for sending these out for review. And I should probably also mention at this point that these retail for $300. US So they're by no means a cheap active loudspeaker when you think about other options like the Edify MR4, which I'll talk about soon. But at the same time, being an active speaker, you're getting amplification and the speaker all in one. So in that context, they're kind of good value. You don't have to go out there and buy a separate power amplifier. You just buy the speakers, plug them into your DAC, and away you go. The question from there, of course, is do they sound any good? And we will get to that shortly, but let's start off with a bit of a tour of the device. What we've got down the bottom is a 3.5-inch carbon fiber woofer. Above that, we've got a 1-inch silk dome tweeter. According to the marketing from Fio, these are a specifically designed tweeter that's going to go all the way down to 800 hertz. Now that's a pretty low cutoff point for a tweeter, and the theory behind that is it's going to allow for a really smooth crossover between the woofer and the tweeter. I can't test that to tell you if it actually plays out in terms of the sound quality or that from a technical point of view, but that's the theory behind it and the way Fio have designed it. So as I said before, these are a two-way speaker, and if we turn around and look at the back now, what I've got in my hands here, this is the active one of the two. The other speaker just has this socket here, which is kind of like your signal cable, potentially power cable. I don't know if there's separate amplification in each unit or if it's all amplified here, and this just carries the signal to the other speaker. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. The key thing is the other speaker just has the input cable, and it receives everything it needs from this speaker here. Beyond that connection socket, though, if we work our way up, we've got power input, these use a 24 volt power supply. It comes with quite a large, kind of laptop looking type power supply. Next to that, we've got a power button. It's a bit disappointing for me that these have got power on the back and there's no auto off function that I can see. So it does mean that if you're like me and you prefer to switch off devices when you're not using them, you do need to reach around the back of it and switch it off every time. I think that's a shame. It does make for a really nice front panel, but I would have loved to see just a nice subtle power button on the front to let you quickly and easily switch it on and off. Moving back around to the back of the speaker though, up here we've got our left-right adjustment switch. This is so you can switch the channels of the speakers. If you need to have this one on a different side, depending on where your DAC is located, you can change which one's left and which one's right. That's really helpful. Some speakers out there don't allow you to do that, and so it means you've either got to find a different way to switch channels, or you're going to be listening to music with inverted channels, and that can be weird. If you know where the sound is meant to be coming from in a recording, and it's suddenly on the other side, that can really throw you off. So great that we've got that switch there. Moving up from there, we've got our inputs. We've got a line-in with a 3.5mm connection, and a line-in with an RCA connection there. Next to those, we've got two switches or two buttons. One of them is a toggle for the lighting. I'll come back around to that in a second. The other one is a toggle for the source input. So again, you've got two inputs, RCA or 3.5. This button here will just cycle through or toggle through the two of them. Above that, we've got our volume control and we've got a bass trim as well. So there's not actual tone controls on these so much as just a bass boost or a bass cut. And while we're talking about the bass boost and the bass cut, let me show you on screen now what that actually does. It's not hugely impactful on the sound. These don't reach particularly deep as you'd expect for a compact speaker like this. And so really what you're adjusting is more kind of your mid-bass sense of body and weight. It doesn't drastically change the tonality of these speakers, but it does have some input. That's also going to depend a little bit on the room that you're in and how the speaker is interacting with the room. 
And so your mileage may vary from mine, but I didn't hear huge shifts, despite the fact that there is a measurable difference. I think ultimately, these speakers don't move enough air for you to kind of increase the bass and really feel the bass change. But of course, it is going to change the tonality of the speaker a little bit. Having covered that off, let's now turn to the bottom of the speaker. I'm holding on at the moment a rubber pad. If I let that come off, it's not attached in any way. It just sits there. There's kind of a locator strip at the back that helps this little bar here to keep the pads that are locked in place a little bit, but it does just drop away when you let it go. And what we've got here underneath the pad, and it's meant to always have one of these pads installed, what you've got underneath there is a clear sort of, or frosted I should say, a frosted panel. And behind that panel is a series of LED lights. So you can have these switched on in a set light color. You can have like a rainbow effect. And as I understand it from playing around with these, it seems that you can select a certain color depending on the input. So you might have the rainbow for input one. You might have a fixed color like the white color for input two, for instance. And it makes it very easy if you can remember which color is which. It makes it really easy for you to recall which input you're on. The final thing to mention while we're looking at the base of these is that, as I said, I've got these particular pads installed at the moment. These provide a small angle to the speaker like so. But then you've also got a set of flat pads. And if I put that one on, that will allow the speaker just to sit on whatever surface and shoot straight out. And this is probably where my one issue with the SP3s comes into play. For me, I don't think the small angle of the angled pad is enough to lift them far enough off a desktop setup. Much like the FIO R7, this is very much being positioned, this being the SP3, very much is being positioned as a desktop solution. But as you can see, just if you look at me sitting here, if these speakers are on the desk around the distance away that a computer monitor would be, the angle of the actual speaker on the desk is firing the tweeter into around the chest level. Ideally, you want the tweeters facing up to eye level, and so it's not necessarily enough angle. I would have liked to see a little bit more. No doubt the engineers at FIO have chosen this for a reason. Maybe it's an optimal setup. Maybe they've tuned the tweeter accordingly. I'm not entirely sure. But for me, I do feel like they're just a little bit low down in terms of where they're firing the tweeter. Of course, if you're anything like me, you can take a pair of speaker stands, and that's where I think the flat pad comes into play, because you can all of a sudden put these on a speaker stand facing right at you, but then the challenge is going to come down to finding a speaker stand that doesn't look silly with these on top of it. Most speaker stands are designed for more of a bookshelf style speaker, they're going to have a fairly broad flat base area, and that's going to make these look pretty dwarfed when sitting on top. So it's a bit of a catch-22 for me with the SP3s. I love that they're small, I just wish they sat better on a desk with a better angle shooting the sound up towards your ears. Beyond that though, I do like the fact that they're compact. And what I didn't mention before is they're also really solid. These are a solid metal cabinet. So they're going to be very rigid, very low resonance theoretically. And I think FIO have pulled off some pretty clever tricks in terms of the way the porting works inside based on the marketing. They've done everything they can to maximize the sound output, both in terms of quality, but also quantity in terms of things like bass response. They've done a lot to really maximize that in such a small package. And that brings us around now really nicely to talking about the sound quality of these. When I first got these and I hooked them up, I had a bit of a bias against them. I didn't expect them to sound very good being so small, with the angles being wrong, sitting on the desk. But as I played around with them more and more, they've actually really grown on me. As you'd expect, and as I've already alluded to, they're not a bass monster. They're not going to give you any kind of thump in the bass. But at the same time, they've actually got a really good tonality. They lean a little bit towards bright. They're not exactly a neutral sounding speaker, and no matter what you do with the bass control, to me at least, they always sound a little bit on the bright side of neutral, but it's not harsh in any way, and the result is actually a wonderful sense of clarity and crispness and excellent, excellent imaging. That's the thing that really stood out to me the most. These do a fantastic job of producing a pinpoint precise image for a speaker in their size and their price point. Again, I'm not suggesting these are going to blow away a pair of really nice passive monitors and a fantastic power amp, but if you're looking for a compact, all-in-one active monitor system, these are actually fantastic. I think one of the things that's contributing towards their sound quality is the fact they're using such small drivers. One of the benefits of using small drivers for your mid-range and your bass, although bass obviously gets limited here, but specifically for the mid-range, the smaller drivers become less directional. And so that's going to help make sure that when you're a little bit off axis, you're still going to hear the sound exactly the same as when you're in the sweet spot. 
and it's also going to help to make sure it throws that beautiful soundstage. As I alluded to before, I did some comparisons with the Edify MR4 active monitors. These are a cheaper active monitor. Off the top of my head, it's not in my notes, but I think they come in at around about $150 US dollars. So they're much cheaper, but they're also at least twice the size of these, probably a bit more than twice the size. They're also not as well finished. They don't look quite as pretty. And as I played around with the MR4s versus these, I think the MR4 had a slightly more natural tonality. It didn't have that sense of brightness to it. But what I found was that every time I came back over to the SP3, I enjoyed it more. It brought the music to life more so through its sense of clarity, its sense of detail, but most importantly, its sense of imaging. I had them set up in my dining room at the time, which is a fairly large room for a speaker of this size at least. And both speakers performed really well in that space. But the key thing was that when I went from the MR4s, which performed well, over to the SP3s, the soundstage just spread out more in terms of space and depth behind the speaker, or I should say width and depth behind the speaker. And then the image placement within that soundstage was so much better from the SP3. Now, again, I'm not sitting here saying that these are going to beat thousand plus dollar speakers. What I am saying, though, is that they're really surprising for the price you pay. It is a shame that they've got a few small issues for me, such as having to get to the back of the speaker for all the controls, especially the power control, which is a bit annoying. I can kind of understand keeping things like the volume, the bass adjustment, even the input selection switch on the back, because you don't need those things as often in most cases. But the power switch for me is something that I would be reaching for really regularly, and I would have loved to see that on the front. I also would have liked to see these with a slightly bigger angle, as I've already mentioned, to get them up off the desk a bit better, or to come with some kind of funky, simple stand. Of course, being that they're pretty heavy, that might have been a challenge at the price point to design something that looks good and is sturdy enough to hold these speakers up. But I just think it's a shame that they sit so low on the desk, they're going to be firing a lot of the sound into the desk, and as I said, into your sort of the, the mid-range part of your torso here. And so those for me are the drawbacks on them. I do think they look a bit funny sitting so low on the desk without the right angle up to the ears. But this is all kind of minor gripes once you switch them on and listen to them. And so I'm not going to drag this out any further. I'm going to wrap things up here by saying that I'm actually very, very impressed with the SP3. They're not going to blow you away on their bass production. You're definitely going to want to find a way to add a subwoofer. And now that I think about it, there's no specific way to set it up with a subwoofer. You probably have to run an extra line out of whatever device you're using to a different sub. So that's a bit of a shortcoming. It'd be nice to see Fio produce some sort of output from these to a sub. But beyond that, if you're just looking for a compact, high quality speaker for your desktop, you're not looking for bass so much as clarity, resolution, and most importantly, that wonderful sense of imaging and soundstage, then I'm actually really impressed with the SP3. I'm going to stop one step short of really properly recommending them, I think, just because of some of those drawbacks that I've already mentioned, but I'm also not going to recommend against them because, again, if this is the sort of thing you're looking for, you're short on space, you don't want big speakers on stands on your desk, then the SP3 could be exactly what you're looking for. So let's keep it short and sweet. I think the SP3 are fantastic for what they offer. I think a few tweaks would have improved them. But if they've been on your list and you're thinking about buying a pair, I do think it could be a really good investment. And so as always, I hope you found the video useful, helpful and informative. If you have, please hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Music